Hi, I'm Judy Tolar. It looks like Jude because it's J-U-D-E, but it's Judy. But I answer to just about anything, so that works well anyhow. And I live in Stillwater, Oklahoma. I was raised in southeast Kansas and then in Bartlesville, Oklahoma, in the northeast part of the state. Um, I don't remember a time when I wasn't drawing, so I think as soon as I could hold a pencil, I began drawing. And I, drawing was always my favorite thing, even more than using crayons and color. So I've just been drawing my entire life. I had art classes in junior high and loved learning about graphic design and lettering. That was a very exciting avenue in art that I didn't know anything about before that. I also had art classes in high school, but I had to juggle them with having a, an after school and evening job. So after that, I went to Oklahoma State University and started out in interior design because I wanted to do something in art, but I thought the only options were really either being a starving artist or being an art teacher, and I didn't think I was particularly qualified for either one of those things, so I went into interior design, but quickly learned that I'm not a three-dimensional artist, which <laughs> then led me into getting a degree in psychology. Thinking is a big part of art, so it kind of went hand in hand. I continued to do my own art and took community art classes. Had some color and design and other classes of that nature in college. And then later had, a, had an opportunity to start doing graphic design, which I'd already been introduced to in junior high and loved it. And had played a lot with letters and typography, and that led to and my whole adult career as a graphic designer and illustrator. My first job was as the staff artist for the library system in Oklahoma City, where we had our own in-house print shop, and I was the artist who designed all of our bookmarks, brochures, posters, annual report, everything, which was a great learning experience and had a lot of fun. And again, it's learning. It's so exciting. From there, I then um, went back to school at, after I, I graduated before I started as a staff artist in Oklahoma City, but then I went back as a post-baccalaureate student at OU, University of Oklahoma, Norman, and took two years of fine art classes, drawing, painting, life drawing, illustration. Had, hours and hours and hours of illustration classes with some fabulous, wonderful, talented artists. And I've been doing freelance graphic design and illustration ever since. We moved to Stillwater, and I did freelance design work for um, a number of companies there until I retired. And during that time, I also just continued to draw and paint because it just was so much fun to do. I, illustrated, wrote and illustrated some children's books, picture books. It was a lot of fun with a, a group of um, writers and artists working for educational publishers. Um, and when I retired, I wanted to continue working from life. It's always been my favorite way to work, it's to look at something and react to it and then not try to recreate a, an actual rendering of that. It's not like a not like a photograph would be, but just to have some sense of what I loved about what I was looking at. So I gathered some friends together. I thought I would be more likely to draw on a regular basis if I had a schedule. So I gathered some friends who had flexible time and they would come to my house on Tuesday mornings and we would draw from life. Um, we hire college students, the water's a college town or wrangle our children or our spouses or whoever else we could get to pose for us. And then I learned about what's called plein air, P-L-E-I-N air, which is painting outdoors in the fresh air. Um, we tried that one 
beautiful spring morning, and, and I kept thinking, okay, I need to work in color, though. What do I have? Oh, I have these pastels, which were left from my art classes at OU. I bet that would work really well. So I pulled those out in some dark paper, to drawing paper, and painted our, we had our azaleas and dogwoods were blooming at the time. And that was it. I fell in love with that way to paint. So since that time, that was 16 years ago, I started studying with some of the best pastel artists. I've had workshops with many who are very well known. Um, my, my main, I guess my mentor and good friend is Clive Tyler, who's a fabulous American Impressionist pastel artist in Taos. Um, really taught me many, many things. I don't know how many workshops I've taken with him and studied with him. I've joined pastel societies and gone to conventions and taken workshops. And now I'm teaching workshops and giving demos and just really has introduced me to a whole world of excellence in pastels. My favorite subjects are, I would say, flowers. I've always loved flowers, we love to garden, we love to be outdoors. And plein air painting is a lot like, I compare it to camping, or it's like gardening, if you don't mind getting, you know, sweaty and getting a little dirt on you and chasing a fly or two, you'll have a lot of fun with plein air painting. You're out with the, the best light source there is, which is sunlight. Um, I love with pastels to paint dramatic things, shadows and dappled light on flowers. I often paint them larger than life. And they, that cliche of paint what you love. Turns out it's really true for me at painting florals and I usually zoom in and I'm painting them up close. A lot like the logos I used to design as a graphic designer. I like to zoom in and you know have this little package and that's kind of how I see my floral paintings are like portraits too. I also do landscapes. Um, I love to paint trees. Every tree has its own character. Um, the way the sunlight hits it or the way the bark grows or the branches sprawl or the clumps of leaves. It's every day, even the same tree is different every day. So I love to just go outside with my pastels and my easel and my paper and just walk around until something catches my eye. And so it's a lot of seasonal painting. Right now it's iris season, so paint, 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 paint. And then in two weeks though, I'll be gone. And I'll be on to poppies if they're bloomy and the very first day lilies and just on and on through the summer and into the fall. And even in the winter, there's always something beautiful to paint. Driving here from Stillwater, we're so intrigued with the colors used to have the beautiful russet colors of the winter grasses and the golden colors and then it's intermixed with the greens, the spring greens that are coming up and like the marshes over by the salt plains. It was so beautiful just to see all those bright beautiful colors. So there's always something to paint, always more, more things to paint than there are hours in the day to do so. Um, but I've loved doing it, and I've, enter, I've been encouraged to enter some competitions, and have done so, and I've become a signature member of the Pastel Society of America because of my paintings, and I'm in the master circle for the International Association of Pastel Societies, which is hard to believe that you know, pinch myself, um, but. Being around those other artists who are so talented and setting my sights on pushing myself to create the most beautiful things I can has just led me to places I never expected to be. I love visiting with artists and communicating with them and painting with them. Um, because when you're at home, I mean, it's mainly a solitary activity when you're actually doing it. So it's fun to just talk shop and go, ooh. Look at the light on that. Don't you like how that dappled light is? You know, it's just really fun to do that. Um, 
So I thought I would be in my jammies retired by now, but instead um, paid a lot and, and shows here and there and taught workshops in various states. And I just, I love teaching and passing on the things that have been passed on to me with soft pastels and sanded papers and just ways to look at the world. There's so much beauty so much beauty out there every day and I just try to capture a little piece of it on paper and hopefully inspire someone else to look at the way the shadows rake across the front yard at the golden hour of the evening or at how it looks when a cardinal lands in a green tree. It's just so pretty and uh, I just want to honor nature and the beauty that's out there in just some small way because there's a lot out there if we just stop to take a look at it.